Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth video in the Setting Up Your Mac for Neuroimaging Analyses series. In the last video, we installed Visual Studio Code and talked about the benefits of using different extensions. And in this video, we're going to set our computers up with the newest version of Python and talk about different Python-based libraries or packages that are useful for data science. So to begin, let's head to Google Chrome and to the neuroscientist read the docs. From there, we'll go to the Python page. So Python is a really powerful programming language that's well-maintained and it's very versatile. So you can use Python to make simple computations, to do simple computations. You can also organize and manipulate data in various forms. You can visualize data, you can do machine learning, uh, you can even manipulate MRI data, viewing time series data, uh, generating functional connectivity matrices. So there are uh, the kind of possibilities through Python are pretty uh, endless. So Macs come pre-installed with Python 2.7, but most of the packages that are out now will likely require uh, Python 3 point something. Python, just like with VS Code, is really great, but what makes it fantastic are the libraries. And so um, those are the ones that are, the libraries are the packages that use Python to perform preset functions. It's like they all come with a bunch of tiny little scripts that allow us to do things um, without having to write all that code line by line. So um, taking advantage of these libraries really adds to the functionality of Python. And I'm gonna talk about some of those libraries in just a second. And so um, if, we're, if you're interested in the Python documentation, you can click here. Um, and that'll go through a lot of important information about Python. Um, and then the direct link for the install is right here. It's also great to check out resources for learning how to use Python. So this is a um, handbook I learned about recently in the Neuro Academy program. And um, here there is just really great content on using Python and the various different libraries for data science. So I highly recommend checking this out. One thing to note is that I am not going to install Python. Um, so in terms of installation, we would go here to install Python and get the latest release. However, I'm not going to install it because if you remember in the package managers video, I installed Anaconda and Anaconda comes with Python. And so I already have it on my computer, but if you wanted the vanilla version of Python, you could certainly get it from that link. Let's talk about the bread and butter libraries. So the first set are our data organization and processing libraries. So Pandas is the primary data analysis library in Python, and it allows us to organize and manipulate data. We can plot both just single vector or single column series data, um, as well as data frame tables and um, various different data frames that could be, you know, of various sizes. Um, NumPy, which is short for numerical Python, it's the, is the scientific computing uh, library of Python, and you can do lots of different operations on arrays and matrices. So if you worked with MATLAB, for example, um, you can think about some of the operations you would do of multiplying different matrices together, which can be done using NumPy. SciPy is built upon NumPy, and through SciPy you can do linear algebra, some integration, optimization, and statistics. And so it's just more functionality. The second set is our data visualization. So matplotlib is um, the main kind of plotting library of Python. So it's also comparable to MATLAB. Um, so if you think about all these really pretty figures that you see in manuscripts, so line graphs and scatter plots and histograms and box plots, you can make a lot of those using matplotlib. Seaborn then extends matplotlib for making some figures um, that can visualize statistical tests and models. So you can plot correlation matrices and connectivity matrices, um, as well as distributions. 
Plotly is this web-based tool that, um, or it's called, it's also called the graph plotting library that allows you to create and display figures. Uh, what's nice about Plotly is that you can hover over figures to show details. So if you're making a presentation or having something uh, posted online, um, people can see specific numbers and values uh, if they ho hover over certain components. Plotly is really great also for making subplots. So if you want to make a figure for a manuscript um, and have multiple different uh, kind of sub um, plots or graphs, you can do that using Plotly. Bokeh is uh, really cool because it's very interactive and scalable uh, in the sense that the visualizations are shown through web browsers. So you can really enhance your presentations and the depiction of data, um, which I think is really great for communicating science to a wider audience. So finally, we have machine learning and AI packages. Scikit-learn is superb. It's a group of packages that come within the SciPy stack and allow us to do machine learning and data mining. So if you want to classify uh, maybe healthy individuals and differentiate them from a uh, clinical population with a disease or disorder. You can do that using Scikit-Learn. Um, it also has clustering approaches, regression models, dimensionality reduction, as well as model selection um, kind of uh, tools or functions. And um, you can also do cross-validation, support vector machine. So really just a large set and breadth of packages, or I should say functions. Um, and then we have TensorFlow. So uh, TensorFlow is really great. Uh, it's known to be an artificial intelligence library that can create large scale neural networks. So if you were to combine machine learning and deep learning, um, that's what's really good for. TensorFlow is also great for uh, working with multiple data sets. Keras um, is a neural network library. So it's TensorFlow's high level API for building and training deep neural network code. Um, so it allows for statistical modeling, but with images and te text. So if you're interested in doing machine learning stuff, but or deep learning, um, but with using images, so more of the convolutional neural networks kind of stuff, um, Keras is fantastic and robust for that. So those are just some of the bread and butter libraries. I encourage you to search for Python packages and libraries that are applicable to your work and your research. So in this video, we talked about some of the libraries that might be useful for data science. And in the next video, we will cover Git. So I'll see you then.